Hi there, it's good to see you and happy 4th of July or whenever you're watching this video. I'm going to tar start today by telling you a little bit about the week I had. Um, on Thursday, I didn't make my bed and you probably don't care, but in my world, that's a really big deal. I have a routine in the morning that includes my personal grooming, taking care of my dog's needs and making my bed. Well, Thursday, I made a conscious decision not to make my bed. Why would I do that? What would cause me to be so reckless in my day, especially so early? Well, it would be love. I officiated a funeral this week for a dear woman who was a fixture at my church growing up when I was a child. I haven't seen her in years, but her family said she spoke about me often and wanted me to officiate. I was so honored and, and humbled, of course. And needless to say, many of the folks from my church growing up came to that service. The room was filled with people who had shaped my earliest knowledge and love of God. It was such a good service, thanks to God that day. And it was an emotional day for me as well. But I was absolutely blessed to do that service. But Thursday morning arrived and I had not put pen to paper for today's message, nor had I even begun to study the scripture lessons or the notes that I had stockpiled and created for the day. And wouldn't you know it, but another funeral came up that needed my presence Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. And I was struggling with my work versus my presence at this funeral. And I was just about make, ready to make my bed when I heard the spirit within me make a lot of noise. Lisa, you could take these moments in front of you to make this bed for the 10,000th time, or you could use this time to show God's love. And as I was readying myself for a different morning than I had planned, I remembered as well how inconvenient it was for Jesus when he had to die. And that really put things in perspective for me. God's love is revealed in this world through you and I. We are the ones who make God visible when we express his love. My presence and my love were needed that morning elsewhere. So I left the bed unmade. I left the books on my desk and I went. I chose love on Thursday and it strengthened my gift from God. As you prepare to hear his word this morning or whenever you're watching this, ask God to open your heart to his love in action. Ask God to reveal to you how you can increase your potential to love, to really love like he does. Now, the very first fruit of the Spirit listed in Galatians that we are studying in our new series on the fruits of the Spirit is, of course, love. Because doesn't everything begin and end with love? On January 1st of this year, our scripture lesson is the very same one that we're reading again today, almost six months later. This is even the same slide I used back in January. And it comes to us at the hand of the ultimate authority, the Apostle John, the one Jesus loved, explaining to us about love. And I don't envy John this task of trying to explain love to a sinful world, because here we are in 2023 still wrestling with God's love, so much so that we're studying the same verse twice in one year so far. Now, this time, our emphasis on this passage is a little different. In January, we were trying to define God's love and how it relates to our version of love. Well, now that we understand so much more about God's love, we move beyond definitions this time, and we move to the application stage, the actions, the living out our full potential in the fruit of the Spirit called love. It's one thing to understand the mechanics of love. It's another thing to exhibit them in our lives. Think about it like driving a car, right? It's one thing to take driver's ed and understand and read the book and know how everything works. But it isn't until you get behind the wheel that you test your metal, right? Almost everyone can drive a car, but not everybody does it well. And almost everyone can love like God but not everybody does that well either. 
And God wants us to do it well. He wants us to love like him. And as I mentioned last week, we all have room to grow when it comes to loving like God. And when it comes to living to our potential, we're not even close to where we could be. So I wonder if you ever stopped to think what your perception of God's love is. A few weeks ago when we started talking about the Trinity, we kind of dipped our toe in that pond, if you will, meaning we talked about how we sort of assign each member of the Trinity different roles in our lives. God as the father, he seems to be the more serious one for us, the disciplinarian, the one we call upon when we have serious prayer needs. God as Jesus is more like our friend, our companion, our redeemer, the one we call upon when we want to rejoice. Thank you, Jesus, right? And God is the Holy Spirit is that peace that lives inside of us, the one that we are to call on for our power and our strength. Now, this varied view of the members of the Trinity is formed in part by our understanding of God in the Old Testament. Many people, including me, have erroneously viewed the Old Testament God as a harsh God, a God of fire and brimstone, of judgment and accountability, unfaithfulness. I myself have said these words. I sure like the God of the New Testament better, as if he changed, right? But see, what happens is the along comes Jesus in the New Testament, and we believe that a God of love is, is a radical inno innovation through Jesus, that this is a new kind of love. Because there is an idea that exists that the Old Testament God is an angry, vengeful God. And the New Testament one, because of Jesus, is one of love. It was Jesus that tamed that fire and brimstone of God into love. But that's just not true. The God of love has always existed and always loved his children, even in the Old Testament. We interpret God's discipline and his correction as punishment instead of the expression of love that it truly is. The Old Testament is an honest telling of God's love and the people's failure to love him in return. And yes, sometimes God gets angry about that. And he disciplines his children. But always God does that in love. I had a professor at Dubuque University who said that the Old Testament is somewhat like a relationship diary. It's a chronicling of the many times that God and Israel broke up and made up over the years. If the Learning Channel existed back then as a network, you would certainly see a reality ser series based on the events of the Old Testament. They'd probably have a show called Our 400 Day Wandering or 90 Day Fiance would feature God and us and it would be wilder than anything they've ever shown so far. But these descriptions of a harsh and judgmental and controlling God are unfair. God chose Israel as a nation to be his people and he entered into a covenant of love with them through Abraham. It was a covenant born out of God's desire to be in relationship with us out of love. At the time, Abraham was worshiping many gods and was oblivious to the true God of the universe. And yet God chose him anyways. Now, if you recall how our relationship with God began, he chooses us. He chooses to love us. And the Old Testament is an account of how many times it was that the people messed up that relationship. God made a promise to Abraham to create a nation that would come from him. And God laid out all these rules and laws and expectations for those people to thrive in the world. And God promised to bless and deliver them as a nation and to love them if they loved him in return. Well, instead, they trampled all over his rules and his laws because it was more fun to do exactly what they wanted to do. So why does God continue to put up with this nonsense? We read the answer to that early on in our scriptures in Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 through 9. Therefore, know that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. God is patient. 
God loves those who continue to love him. He loves those who don't continue to love him, as a matter of fact, but he is patient and he waits. God's promise made to Abraham stands no matter what we as a people do or do not do. His covenant is a promise made out of love that is unbreakable. Now, the word in Hebrew for this kind of love is hesed. And this kind of love is not a syrupy, sappy, romantic love that involves warm feelings in your tummy. This kind of love is a deeply involved love. It's a relational love, very personal, one of loyalty and commitment. The word steadfast is attached to this word. It means now and forever, we will not break. So after 400 years in slavery and 40 years in exile, we have a new generation of chosen people and they are ready to go to the promised land. It took centuries for God to fulfill this promise of love, but not because he was angry at the people. It was because the people were not faithful to God. And for centuries after receiving the promised land, God continued to love his people and their love for God continued to come and go. God's love is as evident in the Old Testament as are his wrath and his rage. They are all very real. The Bible is an honest depiction of our history, of the people choosing time and time sin over God, and how his often fiery response to that disobedience had to be played out. Now, God's wrath is incurred when his children deserve his discipline, and his discipline is always an act of love for us as well because our God first and foremost loves us everything that he does flows from that love now Jesus Christ is another expression of that love from the very same God that he still has for his people we're going to read from the Apostle John's teaching on God's love and ours found in 1 John 4 7 through 16 now, John has been addressing the heresies that have begun to pop up in the local churches all around their area. And he just explained how we are to rely on the Holy Spirit inside of us as our guide in love, which brings us to the reading that we're going to read now here today. So hear these words from 1 John 4, 7 through 16. Dear friends, let us love one another. Love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. I know this is a lot of words, right? But what John is teaching us is that the natural result of God's overwhelming love for us is that we would want to love one another. John did not create this doctrine to love one another. He's actually repeating an Old Testament law in Leviticus to love your neighbor. As human beings, we love because God loved us first. He put that desire within our hearts. The Holy Spirit inside of you is yearning to grow in love. It wants to expand that. The very fact that we feel 
know and experience love is only a gift from God. We didn't have to have this emotion. And those who do not have love clearly do not know God because he isn't, doesn't just love us. God is love, Paul says, excuse me, John says. And John reminds us again of the depth of God's love by proclaiming Christ's work on his behalf. God loves us so much that he allowed Jesus to die a heinous death in our place. He took our punishment and he took our sentence and he overcame our biggest fear in life, dying. Now, our response to this outpouring of love is to go out and love God's world in the same exact way. And verse 12 is the critical teaching that we need to pay attention to today. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. When we love one another, we make it possible for the spirit to grow our love. God's love is perfected when it is reproduced in us or through us. And we actually make God's love visible in this world and tangible to others through our actions. So John says we cannot see God, but we can see the essence of God as we love his people. John says that the Holy Spirit is the source of our love and the source of our ability to love others. This is how we know that we live in him and he is in us. He has given us his spirit. Perhaps the most critical truth that we can glean from this passage is that God's presence is observable in our lives. Christians who love each other reveal God in their loving. The church of God has no more effective way to testify to the world that God is real than to love the world with God's love. As we rely on the love of God for us, we know that God is love. And whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. We rely on this love that John is talking about to give this love to the world. We say that you are in our thoughts and prayers too often. We say our best wishes are extended to you or I'll pray for you. But what John is saying is that's not enough because that's not all God does when we need love. We should be doing all that God does for us when we need love. We should be acting it, showing it, living it. Love is action and our fruit of love will only grow when we use it. We know that the Holy Spirit living inside each one of us is a piece of God who dwells in us. And although sometimes we mar that image with our sin, God does not leave us. He stays. And it is because of the Spirit's presence in us that we have such a strong need for love in our lives and a need to love others. When the Spirit of God lives in us, we begin to bear the fruit of his love visibly to the world. And the character of God continues to grow inside of us, shaping us into Christ. Jesus made it clear that love is the quality of true discipleship. In 1 Corinthians, he says, Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this they will know you are my disciples, if you love one one another. Without love, we're just a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, he says. Using any gifts of the Spirit that we have without love as the base is for us to try to breathe without air. It's impossible. We need love. Now, we know it's difficult to try to love others the way that God does. But John suggests that we remember daily what it was that Jesus did for us. And John suggests that we lean on the Holy Spirit whose presence enables us to love like God. It was God who initiated 
this gift of love. It was all his idea. He embodies it for all of creation. And we can make that love possible for others to see through our lives. If we leave our beds unmade once in a while, or put down our pens once in a while in favor of doing something tangible, we can express God's love. There are many opportunities that the Holy Spirit lays before us and gives us a choice on how we're going to respond. Will you respond with a cursory platitude? Well, you're in my prayers. Or will you actually step out in love, in action? If we want people to see and experience the power of God, it comes through us. Our God has been expressing his gracious, bountiful, never-ending love to us since the beginning of time. And if God lives inside of us, we cannot deny our need for love or our need to give love. The spirit that is within us is there to help strengthen that gift of love so that we'll be more like God. But sometimes you just have to leave your bed unmade to do it. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gift of love, for the fact that you chose to love us first and that you give us this love endlessly, even when we damage it or when we don't deserve it. So we thank you for this gift. We thank you for your great love and we ask for the courage, the strength, the wisdom and the know-how to step out in love wherever we can, whenever we can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful week. We'll see you soon.